Today, let's talk about oral retinoids for acne, aka Accutane. Hi, my name is Dr. Jenny Liu. I'm a board certified dermatologist and welcome to my channel. I'm gonna briefly give you an overview of this medication, how I use it as a dermatologist, what you should be aware of, and what to expect when it comes to treating your acne with isotretinoin. In addition, I'm gonna be answering some of the most frequently asked questions or themes that you guys have submitted on Instagram. So oral retinoids are essentially derivatives of vitamin a. The most common use of oral retinoids is for the treatment of severe acne, but there are other conditions that dermatologists, we use off-label for various different things, including common things like rosacea, really severe keratosis pilaris, things that are often associated with severe acne, such as hydratinitis, superativa, and severe inflammatory scalp conditions like dissecting cellulitis of the scalp, and so on. How oral retinoids work, similarly to topical retinoids, is they really get down into the cells and affect gene expression. And when it comes to treating acne with the oral retinoids, we know that they're mechanism are really demonstrated through their anti-inflammatory effects as well as ability to modify the sebacytes or the oil glands and that is really the heart of where acne occurs. It essentially helps to shrink down the oil glands, shrink down the site of inflammation where acne occurs and therefore improves acne. So who are potential candidates for Accutane? Well, first and foremost, those with really severe nodular cystic acne, deep pimples, pustules, acne that is scarring. It is also appropriate for individuals that have had recurrence of severe acne despite treating with other therapies like topical medications and rounds of oral antibiotics. So now let's talk about some of the common side effects experienced by individuals on Accutane. Number one, because it shrinks down your oil glands, you will get Right, and that's actually expected and a good symptom we use to monitor how well you're responding and if the medications, if, if the dose is appropriate enough or high enough. So it's not just the dry skin that you normally would experience with topical retinoids, but it can even lead to dry chap lips, dry nose, even nosebleeds, dry eyes. And some people can even get super dry and get eczema outbreaks. And this often makes taking Accutane a little bit more of a challenge here in the winter time, but dryness is expected. Some of my more active, physically active, active patients, they may experience some muscle aches and joint pain. And really that is pretty much it guys. Majority of the time, it's really just the dryness and maybe occasional muscle aches. Accutane can also change your lipid panel in your body. And usually we see this more commonly in people that have already baseline hyperlipidemia, elevated triglycerides and cholesterol. And most of my healthy patients, young healthy patients that I'm dosing Accutane in, it's normal. We watch that if it becomes becomes elevated and if it becomes super elevated then we talk to their primary care doctor and may either cut back on the medication or add in a lipid lowering medication. This medication is metabolized through your liver and so if you drink a lot of excessive alcohol or take a lot of medications that may also get metabolized by your liver or damage your liver, like for example Tylenol, then this could be an issue but this is also where we would counsel the patients and this is also where we check labs at the beginning of treatment and kind of intermittently throughout treatment to make sure they're okay. Now, when counseling patients at the start of Accutane, there are two other things I mentioned and bring up, and these are two issues that have often been actually misconstrued in information online. And that is number one, the association with depression. It started from a very small group of studies way back when Accutane was first approved, but since then, we have 20 plus years, hundreds of thousands of patients have been on it, and through much larger studies, the association of Accutane with mental health issues have not been proven. A lot of the studies actually show the opposite and that makes sense, right guys? If your acne improves and your skin looks healthier and more clear, you're going to feel better about yourself and less likely to feel depressed. The other association is with inflammatory bowel disease. And again, this is where it's very gray and we just need more studies. There has not been any studies that have shown that Accutane causes infl inflammatory bowel disease. It's purely an association. The most recent meta-analysis in 2016 really showed that there was no association or Accutane Accutane does not increase your risk of inflammatory bowel disease. Now, probably the most serious side effect of taking oral isotretinoin is birth defects. We know that patients who get pregnant on Accutane, you will have babies with deformities. This is where we counsel our patients and any female patient will have to be on two forms of birth control here in the U.S. to be able to take Accutane and have to have timely repeated monthly urine pregnancy tests that is negative to allow them to continue on Accutane. 
Accutane. So that was my quick but somewhat long spiel. Let's get into your questions. So does Accutane help with scarring? Not really. Topical retinoids may help with collagen production. The use of oral retinoids for anti-aging, there are some studies that support that, but really the goal with taking Accutane if you do have scarring is to really minimize the process that's causing the scarring so you don't continue to get new scars. But scar treatment really is most effective through a combination of appropriate topical, some protection, and procedures done by your dermatologist. Next question is Accutane good or Adapalene good? These are all derivatives of vitamin A, but isotretinoin is really only taken orally. Adapalene is used topically and they are both great for the right type of acne that they treat. So Adapalene is very effective for mild acne, comedonal acne, so lots of blackheads and whiteheads. Isotretinoin is really helpful for those who have deeper acne, cystic acne, nodular acne, acne that's leading to scarring. Often people that have had tried adapalene, if their acne is severe enough and not improving, they may go on to take Accutane. But you can't compare the two because they're totally different medications. One is oral, one is topical, and they're really meant for different types of acne. Is it true that our skin becomes worse initially before it becomes better using isotretinoin? You know, I had a purging video. I talked about purging and what purging means to me as a dermatologist. Truly, when it comes to taking oral isotretinoin, this is really where the that purging occurs. And if anything else, this is where I really see it. Yes, absolutely. Now, of course, not everyone will experience this, but it is very common for your acne to flare in the first couple months as you start and as we adjust the dose of your Accutane to an appropriate dose based on your weight. The risk of purging or flaring, I should say, really depends on your the individual, but we see a more commonly in people that have really bad acne to start. It doesn't happen to everyone, but it is somewhat expected and that is what I counsel my patients on as well. What are the reasons acne comes back after multiple rounds on Accutane? Really good question. About 70% of individuals just require one course. If you end too soon and didn't reach a therapeutic goal, if you had really bad acne to start, and if you have a family history of severe acne, those are risk factors for you needing a mul multiple courses of isotretinoin. Now to caveat that, hormonal acne often comes back despite being on Accutane and that has to do with just the hormonal part of acne. I have a handful of female patients that I've seen in clinic that comes to see me because our acne is really right back to where it was before Accutane. Here's the thing, you are definitely gonna get clear regardless of the type of acne you have. Accutane shrinks down your oil glands in a way and hormones stimulate your oil glands. You can't really be on Accutane forever. That is just not appropriate, not realistic. So of course, for those who are predisposed to hormonal acne, your acne will eventually come back after being on Accutane. Now, how long will that period be? It's very different. For some of my patients, it was like six months. For some, it was five years, right? But the point is that if you are prone to it, it may come back. Does it potentially cause any long-term health problems? From the large amount of studies that we have, clinical studies that we have on people that have taken isotretinoin, most people don't end up with chronic long-term health issues. Now, everyone is different. And if you have concerns, this is where I would recommend you talk to your prescribing doctor about your concerns to make sure that you are an appropriate candidate for Accutane. Experience of using it in rosacea doesn't make erythema slash flushing worse. Or isotretinoin I use to treat really bad inflammatory rosacea or even granulomatous rosacea that I often see in my skin of color patients. Obviously the dryness can cause skin irritation and flushing, but there are tips and ways we can work around that. But yes, for those with rosacea, not the, just the flushing, but the red bumps, isotretinoin can be helpful in treating that. What dose do you usually start patients at and what is the normal dosing during treatment? So if I'm understanding the question correctly, a typical starting dose is really half of their weight in kilogram. For example, if a patient is 60, roughly 60 kilogram, I will start at 30 milligram the first month and then ramp up to 60 milligram the second month, assuming they have no issues with tolerating the medication. Ideally, I would like my patients to eventually get on fairly quickly one milligram per 
kilogram per day to allow them to reach their goal in a reasonable amount of time, which is roughly five to six months. Now, some people can't take a really high dose due to muscle aches, dryness, what have you. So this is where we would have to work with them and dial down the dose. And sometimes we go up and down on a monthly basis, just depending on how things are. But for those individuals who are able to tolerate that one milligram per kilogram per day dosing allows them to finish on time. And those who are not, they just may have say a month or two longer than average. How long? This is a really good question. How long do you advise female patients to wait before trying to conceive post isotretinoin course? We know that acutin cause birth defects. And this is also where not only should you not be getting pregnant, male patients or female patients, please do not donate your blood if you're taking isotretinoin. That's actually one of the, um, the things that we caution you on. Now, isotretinoin has a half-life between 10 to 20 hours. What that means is it takes about 10 to 20 hours for half of the medication to leave your system. And we know that this medication is really not detected in your body about a month after you stop the medication. So I usually tell my patients after a month of stopping the medications is when you can try to conceive. Also, the thing I asked about is isotretinoin does not affect your fertility. It causes birth defects, but it does not affect your fertility. I mean, as dermatologists, we have all seen lots of patients that have requested to be go on Accutane or who needs Accutane because their mom or dad has severe acne and had to take it, right? So it absolutely does not affect your fertility, but it can cause miscarriage as well as birth defects if you get pregnant while taking it. Do you get quicker results with higher doses of isotretinoin? Thoughts on low dosing? There are some dermatologists out there that will prescribe longer courses with lower doses, and mostly it's because the patient is not able to tolerate a higher dose, whether they're getting super dry, it's the winter time, or they have severe muscle aches. I'm more for if you're able to tolerate it, understand that you will have some of the common side effects. We have tips on how you can care for your skin to get through the dryness, but I'm one that is just let's just do it, get it done, and be over with it. And so you will definitely have more results when you are on the appropriate dose. And the appropriate dose, like I said, is roughly for me, one milligram per kilogram per day. We know that the effective treatment is based on a therapeutic range determined by your weight. And of course, the severity of your acne. The therapeutic range is between 150 milligram per kilogram to 200 milligram per kilogram. And you would multiply 150 or 220 by your weight in kilogram to determine the kind of therapeutic cumulative medication dose that would be effective for you. And then you can divide that by the amount that you take on a daily, monthly basis to really kind of have an idea how many months you need to be on the medication. And I just hate to drag it out, especially for a lot of my female patients that need to come and see me every month and get a urine pregnancy test. That's a monthly visit and has to be within a specific window of time that you can do this. And you have to see the dermatologist 10 to 12 times a year. And that's just a lot of visits. So I like to just go hard within reasonable range and have it be done with. Do you treat to a target cumulative dose or use a different approach? So that's a really good question. It really depends on the type of acne. For my average nodular cystic acne, severe acne patients, I do treat to that cumulative dose. And by the time they're on Accutane, they probably have had a lot of different treatments and have bad acne that require them to be on Accutane, I just finish everybody at the higher end of 220 milligram per kilogram to really reduce the risk of needing a second course. For my hormonal acne patients, I will have them be on Accutane and I will have them take it until they are clinically clear and not really getting any breakout, possibly extend that treatment to another month and then bridge them to spironolactone. So in general, the hormonal acne treatment duration tends to be shorter by maybe a couple months than my regular acne patients. So that was a lot of information on Accutane. I hope you found this video informative. If you want me to make similar videos like this addressing other topics, please comment below what the topics. If you have questions about how to care for your skin while you're on Accutane, I do have few Instagram reels and posts on this. You can check them out on my social media. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time.